Okay. So we are doing the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita. And yesterday uh, we saw that Krishna is suggesting a different line of thoughts, like different way of acting, right? He was saying uh, you can act for sacrifice. That way you won't be and end up creating a lot of bondages. And if you are not acting for sacrifice, you will probably going to end up creating a lot of bondages in this world, right? And then uh, he moved on to another level and he say like the people who are established in their self and uh, true self who know what they are and uh, take joy in their self, right? Here the self means awareness. So if they have moved from this mind uh, emotions uh, category and they if they have established themselves in self and they uh, find the joy and the happiness in themselves, for that person there is no action required, right? So he's keep moving in these two different states, right? One where he talks Arjuna on the level of Arjuna and on another he moves up on the, you know, um, on the plane and then he explains something which is currently beyond the level of Arjuna's understanding, right? So moving forward, now he, so, okay, so the next, to understand the next verse, this, uh, there is uh, one very important uh, theory uh, in Vedanta, right? Which is uh, like everything in the nature is made out of three gunas, right? It's like a theory of gunas, a th theory of properties. So everything, it's like if the nature is a, uh, if nature is a cloth, then it is woven by, you know, three different fabrics, that sort of thing. Everything is has these three qualities in a different ratios, right? So what are the three gunas? Tamas, Rajas and Sattva. Tamas is a property which is like dull, inertia, dark, uh, ignorance, that sort of property. And Rajas is more agitated, active, desire, I have to do this, I have to be that, uh, that sort of energy. And Sattva is more balanced, more pure, knowledge, understanding, um, just higher being, that sort of energy, right? And each one of us has a different uh, uh, formulation. And some people are very ambitious, some people are very calm and collected, some people are, you know, very ignorant, very... Uh, so different people has a different... Uh, uh, you know, quality of these gunas. That's what this theory is telling us, right? And not in fact just like people, but in general, everything has these three qualities, right? So the next uh, verse, he says, uh, this is very interesting and it's uh, a little bit <laughs> uh, challenging to understand, but what he is saying is, action in all cases are performed by the qualities of material nature, these gunas. Actions in all cases are performed by these qualities uh, of material nature. He whose mind is confused by egoism imagines that I am the doer. Right? A uh, little bit uh, higher end, uh, uh, I would say, uh, teaching. Because see, at one point Krishna is saying, Arjuna, like you should act for sacrifice. He's saying you are the doer and you should act like this way. Right? You have the right to action, but not the... So it's assuming like Krishna is a doer. And here he is saying, you are not actually a doer. Actually, the it is your actions are being done naturally by the nature, right? By the qualities of nature, you are not doing these actions, right? So again, he's moving on a different planes, right? At one plane, Arjuna is an actor. Arjuna is a doer. Then he moved for deeper and say like, on this level, you are not a doer, right? You are just a witness. You are just the awareness. Now, you're not really a doer, but uh, he's keep moving on these two different planes or two different, you know, kind of a realities. And he's saying uh, actions are performed by the qualities of material nature, right? And nature is acting on nature kind of thing. So how does that, uh, what does that mean? Like nature, quality of nature's are acting, not you, you know? So the way he's saying, like, you have a certain constitution, right? certain state and it's changing over the lifetime it's not like a fixed thing that you get over the lifetime it changes and many different things affects it but basically it's not you who is saying this thing it's not you who is acting this thing it's the knowledge inside yourself it's the desire inside yourself that is actually acting through you you know it's not uh, uh, you who is in total control here right at some level we can understand for example uh, it's not hard to understand like uh, most of the functions of my bodies are just being 
you know, happening by themselves. I have zero control, right? My body is keep growing. My heart is pumping. My liver is doing its job. You know, all these different things are just happening and I have no control. I have zero control and it's just naturally doing its job, right? But there are certain things I do have control. And what I have control over is this action, right? I can act this way. I can act that way. I can choose this. I can choose that. You know, so I have some degree of control over how I should act, right? And Krishna is saying here is, uh, this is because you are deluding right now. You are getting identified with a, you know, particular um, uh, aspect of nature. That's why you are thinking you are doing this thing. But in actuality, your desires are doing this thing. A particular uh, nature of guna is doing these things, right? A little bit challenging to understand, but uh, he's pointing towards a diff more deeper aspect here. And he whose mind is confused by egoism, imagine I am the doer. Now, what is the egoism, right? It's a, egoism is the uh, root uh, ignorance here. That's what uh, literature Vedanta points towards. Like there is no individual identity, but it does feel like, it's like a cognitive illusion. It does feel like there is an uh, individual ad entity who is acting. In the reality, this is like very strongly interconnected interdependent and it's acting like one thing acting on another another thing is acting on another uh, something like that is happening for an example is uh, you know if you take uh, for example like a car right so it does look like it does feel like there's a car that is moving from this direction to that direction there's a strong entity and we can talk like this we can say this car should move from here to there and it should follow that path right we can talk it like it, it's an entity but if we go a little bit more deeper, there is no such thing as a car there, right? There is no entity, there is no ego exists there. It is a collection of different elements, right? It's a collection of there is a one motor, one uh, steering, one, you know, uh, seat and tire and these things collectively are what we are calling the car. But in reality, there is no car. There, in reality, there is no, you know, ego is there. But it does feel like there is a individual identity. It feels like there is a car. But that's, that's, I think, what uh, he's like getting a little bit more deeper than he said, there is no car actually. There is just these different elements moving together and feels like it's a car. If you get a little bit further, uh, more grosser in the reality, there is actually a car which is moving from here to there. So it's like that. It's that kind of a dilemma there, right? It's an it's a entity is there, but it's not really an individual ent entity, but it's like a collection of a few different things. Uh, that is... Uh, happening so he's saying the mind confused by egoism thinks i am the doer all right so at that level he is like bringing arjun a little bit more deeper and saying at that level there is no doer here right things are just happening by themselves and you are deluding there right and this see i think the whole point of krishna is uh, he's taking one by one each ignorance from the arjuna he's taking one by one each ignorance from the mind of arjuna and um, with each ignorance the more disturbance goes away and he get you know get a little bit more established in the reality like what is happening in in truth so after that he says uh, you know then you should no uh, Then you should dedicate all action to me with your mind fixed on me, the self of all, freed from desire and feeling of egotism, uh, fight, right? So now he's suggesting like, uh, you know, the sense of ownership that you have on the action. Even that ownership you can renounce to me, like you can offer that ownership to me. You can say, I mean, you can, um, uh, you know, do these actions not because you want to have this or that, but you can do it because as a, you know, as an offering to me, right? It's another way of uh, acting that he's proposing to Arjuna, right? The first, he proposed to something like uh, be established in the, you know, uh, equanimity and act from that point of view. Then he's offered something like, you know, act for the sacrifice. Uh, don't act for, you know, sense pleasure everywhere. He's very clear that don't act for sense pleasure or selfish interest. He is offering another um, way of acting where he's saying, act do your action as offering to me because anyhow you are not the doer so you can offer these actions to me 
and that way you can be free from the fruits of these actions right and he further builds on these uh, concepts of you know the gunas that actual uh, doers not you so he's saying even the wise person act according to his nature right whatever the nature he has uh, whatever is the constitution he has based on these different uh, properties of nature even the wise person acts on that nature right and it's uh, Yeah, so the, so the basic again the basic advice here is uh, you can understand your nature and you can let your nature do its job right you don't uh, you know be whatever kind of person you are in a way uh, you can have that basic understanding that you are you have this sort of nature and you can act according to that nature right uh, instead of again again another point of view of you know how one should act uh, uh, and so that's that's another way of acting right again uh, you can act for sacrifice you can act as a offering to me and anyhow you are acting from the nature you, you are not the doer and you are acting uh, you know uh, based on your nature so understand your nature and then you know uh, even the wise people are acting based on their nature right then Arjuna asked a very interesting question he said uh, so Krishna it's like uh, you know, sometime I even know there is something that I'm doing which is not good for me. But it feels like something inside me is forcing me to do this thing, right? It's like forcefully I'm, um, you know, some fo I'm being forced to do this thing. What is that, <laughs> right? What is that? So the answer of Krishna is uh, the reason of it is this rajas property of nature, right? There is this quality in nature, rajas, which... Uh, its form is desire, right? It, its nature is desire. So that uh, that property makes you do these things, right? That property is, is uh, unstable. So that property has a nature of desire, right? So it, it has this force that makes you do these uh, uh, things. And this uh, uh, property is not in your favor. Understand it as your enemy, right? So you yourself... Uh, if your goal is to self-realization, if your goal is the self-realization or deeper understanding, then this property is actually an enemy for you because it is like a dust in front of a mirror, right? It is, it, it won't let you see. It's constantly burning forever in front of you. So it's like a dust in front of you which takes all your attention, right? Which brings, a, which takes all your attention. So on the other hand, you are right there, what you are calling self here, what is calling self or awareness or right there. But you have such a strong, you know, attachment of such a strong pull towards this uh, property of uh, Rajas so that uh, it, you cannot see, right? It just keeps you engaged. It keeps you engaged uh, in that sense, right? And um, it's, it's like a curtain in front of you. It won't let you see. And it's burning all the time and it's never satisfied, right? So you are stuck in this cycle, endless cycle of, you know, desires. Because it's keep burning, it's, it's very nature of desire is this, right? So it's continuously burning, it's never, never going to end. You're just going to spend your life trying to satisfy it, satisfy it, satisfy it. On the just behind it is what you are actually self and from where he's giving all these uh, different teaching like the self, the nature of self is joy and pleasure and the person who is, you know, joyous in their uh, self, that person doesn't even require to do any action. But you cannot see it until you are engaged in this... Uh, uh, Rajas Gunas, right? Then he gives, uh, then he tells Arjuna that uh, for this Rajas uh, property to survive, uh, the senses, the mind, and the intellect is its adobe, right? It lives in these areas the sense, mind, and intellect. It is in this realm, this is in this realm where the desire is, in this realm where the you know Rajas Guna is. And in this realm where it is making you deluded, right? So then he's suggesting in the beginning, get the control over your senses and kill this enemy, uh, which is the, which is making for you to understand the reality, which is the enemy of knowledge and consciousness. So in the beginning, get your senses in the control. So you could, you know, master this rajas aspect of the nature right and 
then he gives like a very interesting teaching he classifies the different levels of uh, these elements right he says your senses are uh, superior than inert objects right your mind is superior than senses right in the sense uh, your mind is like a controller of the senses there is uh, all the different senses mind is like a motherboard which decides you know which has a control over the senses your intellect is higher than the mind right so the intellect the quality of intellect is more like you know determination thinking um, strategizing these kind of stuff so yeah, if, if your intellect is decided that i'm going to take a fast today then it doesn't matter what kind of urges urges are like mind right so what kind of urges are coming today if i if i make a decision there that i'm not i'm going to fast today then that uh, intellect is stronger as compared to mind then i'm gonna you know uh, win the mind the urges the different urges that i'm having with the intellect right and the self is higher than the intellect right so your sense of being your awareness this is even higher than the intellect right that's why he keeps saying like if you act from the equanimity your actions are going to be superior than if you act with the you know uh, strategizing intellectualizing and then acting so that way your self your true nature is even higher than your uh, intellect right and then know yourself beyond the intellect and then win this uh, battle with uh, this you know uh, desire this uh, this rajas guna which has a form of desire right now this is the suggestion he is making here yeah so in these few verses uh, they are basically based on these gunas this theory of gunas right and where the rajas guna is, seems to be like a culprit so he is saying like get the um, you know get the victory over this rajas guna don't let it control you right um, get the mastery over it that's the basic suggestion and other than that you are going to have a basic nature right so act according to your basic nature even the wise people are acting according to their basic nature it's smarter to act according to your basic nature and fail as compared to you know act according to somebody else's nature and then you know even succeed so he is uh, giving that sort of advice there and ultimately he is saying that if go beyond this uh, quality understand you know get established in the self and see through uh, this uh, qualities and how they are working on one on each other and know that you are not the doer right and you can offer these actions that you are taking to me you know and um, that way you can you know master this egoism in a way right that is like uh, i am the owner of this action you can even surpass this with offering these actions to me yeah so that was the chapter 3